welcome to the stream. Today, we are learning from that bastion of holiness and godliness, Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem. Eminem is going to show us how we can help ourselves and others to live a better life now and forever. Take a second to like, share, subscribe, use the link in the description to connect with us, and as always, please consider a financial contribution. Let's get into it. Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted, one moment, would you capture it or would you just let it slip? You better lose yourself in the music, the moment. You better own it. You better never let it go. Do not miss your chance to go. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Now, these are the iconic words. Look, they're the words of Eminem in the song Lose Yourself and his music, for better or worse, and sometimes for both, taught a shared and generation of people. He talked about his real world struggles and problems he was facing in his life and the importance of grabbing at that opportunity when it appears. But Eminem did not grab opportunity by himself. There was a whole community of people behind him that made the grabbing of opportunity possible. Today, we are honoring at my congregation students and teachers, and both are essential to the work of passing on knowledge and shaping the future and grasping opportunities. Lives are changed and opportunities created in the student-teacher relationship. As Eminem would say, you've got to have someone who can help you grasp that opportunity so that you don't let it go. Each of us has a favorite teacher, and if we're honest, our favorite teacher as a kid may not be our favorite teacher looking back. But there is always someone who invested in you and demanded not what you could do, but your very best. Who was that person for you? And why were they your favorite of all time? What did you love about them? Leave it in the comments. Now, for me, there are a number of teachers who have really made an impact on my life. Miss Andrews was my middle school English teacher and she made a huge, probably the biggest impact and continues to do so. It was her parents, Les and Kathy, who helped usher me into Anglicanism in college, but it was Miss Andrews who had a bigger impact. Now, as an English teacher, she insisted that you would score 100 on a singing test in the sixth grade to make it out of the grade, and it was oddly super important for English. Now, the tune is Jingle Bells. You may have heard it, but it's not that hymn text as you would. The song was actually called Jingle Verbs, and it went like this. BM is, our was, were, been, have, has, had, shall, will, should, would, does, do, did, must, may, might, can, could. And 30 years later, I can still remember the words to that song. It represents every single possible helping verb in the English language, and it formed the basis of our instruction on diagramming sentences and how the English language is used effectively. Now, I did not have a native love of diagramming sentences. It seemed frankly pointless. I didn't even want to learn the stupid song. Also pointless. But behind the arcane rules of parallel and intersecting lines that is diagramming a sentence, there is a method to that madness. She was teaching us a love and understanding of the language, the language that I use every day to make the gospel heard and real to people. And without her and the seemingly pointless song, I would have picked up on the structure of the language, maybe. And maybe I developed a love of it and how it all sort of gets put together. But maybe not. You only get one opportunity, so do not miss your chance to go as Eminem would say. And that is what teachers do. They help kids find and not miss their opportunity to not let it go, to lose themselves in the music and the moment. That is that educational process. And yes, we teach them lots of important life skills and equally important to learning our shapes and our colors and our letters and our numbers. But more importantly, we teach our kids here who God is and about the love of our Heavenly Father in the radically poured out by His only begotten Son, Jesus, on the cross, and the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit 
to form and keep us in the knowledge and love of God. And the teaching of shapes and colors and numbers and letters and life skills is super essential. But it's more essential that they know that God loves them. Each day in my life, that is a comfort and a strength. And I can remember sitting with a girl in one of our classrooms a few years ago whose daddy was deployed for the army. And she had shared with us all in chapel how she was sad her dad was away and scared for him. So later that day, I just sat on the floor with her and talked and prayed for her daddy, trusting his care to Jesus. Or just this past year, we had a child who needed surgery. And the week before surgery in chapel, she knelt in front of the whole class and people laid their hands upon her. And she was anointed with oil consecrated by our bishop for healing. And we prayed for her. Now, this was simultaneously the greatest and the worst idea of chapel ever. Most weeks now, every single kid has some serious cut or scrape or bruise or fingernail that needs anointing with oil for healing. But thanks to our teachers and Ayush and Carol and Joanne and Kathy, our kids here are learning about the goodness of God. And this reminds me of a story in Acts chapter 8. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go up toward the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and he went. And an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure, had come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading from the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join him reading Isaiah. So Philip ran over and he heard and asked him, do you understand what you were reading? And the eunuch said, how can I unless someone guides me? And so he invited Philip to come and sit with him. Now, the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and a lamb before its shearers, he was silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied. And who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Lovely words for some people who grew up in the Christian faith. Maybe that reference means something. But for most of us, not really, and probably not for the eunuch. This is part of Isaiah 53. It speaks about the coming of the Messiah, the anointed one of the Father who comes to heal and redeem and restore all of creation. And so it's all that goodness that Isaiah talks about being kind of poured into this one little story. Now, we now know that Jesus is that person and continues to be. And Philip knew about Jesus and his saving grace, but the Ethiopian eunuch did not yet know. He needed a teacher. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to see some water and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. And he was baptized. Now, Philip stopped what he was doing and turned aside from where he was going to teach this stranger about the goodness of God. How was he going to know if no one taught him? We are blessed to have so many people that care about and teach our children. We rejoice and give thanks for them today. For how will our children know if no one teaches them? And the Holy Spirit has poured, though, into each of you grace and goodness by virtue of your baptism. We are reminded in Ephesians 4 that each of us has been gifted for ministry as apostles and evangelists and shepherds and teachers to build up the whole body of Christ. 
Each aspect of your ministry here and in the wider world is about showing others the goodness of God. Now, and each of you has a ministry, even if maybe you're not cognizant of what yours is, from taking care of elderly parents to taking care and raising children to getting them to school and to being the light of Christ in the world as you interact with people, to doing your job faithfully and being a shoulder to cry on or someone to laugh with and to support. Each of you has a ministry of carrying the gospel, of showing and teaching others about the goodness of God. Each of us does it as we embrace kingdom of God values and we welcome others in Jesus' name. May we never stop being those people. And may we never stop being taught by others. So lose yourself in the moment, the music. Do not ever let it go. You might only get one opportunity. Do not miss your chance. Connect with us to be taught more about following Jesus. We would love to walk with you. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Grant us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief and trouble, that they may be delivered from distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and ever-living God, thank you for bringing us together this day. Thank you for letting us draw closer to you in prayer. In your name we pray. Amen.